one. Haley Baitup takes the one point. Naomi Flood was in second. Hancock Brown, good good spot for her there in fourth. Mercer Nerven. We move through Brody Moyer. That was the big one. She's won both races so far. She came in seventh. Well done to Bonnie Hancock. She had a great swim league. Perkins, Maddie Dunn, Alira Richardson as we move through the rest of the field. And the big story there, Candice Balzon back in 15th position as we welcome along. Two races for the girls today. The position they finish in represents their points. So if you're coming in fifth place, you've got five points. You had the two placings up the two races. The lowest points wins. If you have a dead heat, we go to the last race as a counter. Well, the order for the second come race back. is board swim ski. Come back, buddy. Come back, please. A lot of nervous girls that you'll speak to at the start of the day, Nick, they come over the hill and they see four and five foot waves. It's a little bit different to what they're used to. Yeah, it's colder as well. Most of them Queensland, New South Wales. It is colder for them as we off for a start in race number two. And it is unpredictable conditions out there in Portsea. We can see them all now making their way down. As I put um, pointed out before, there's a big rip out there to the right-hand side just near that rock shelf. The people on the far right are going to get a lot faster run out towards the camp. Well, we see the yellow costume of Brody Moyer there. That is the one that stands out. All the other girls are in pink, but the race leader, the series leader, is in the yellow. The girls wearing different coloured caps will uh, take you through those. Hayley Bait up wearing the orange cap and pink cosy. We'll keep an eye on her. Having won the first race, she has the lowest point so far and technically is in the lead going into the second race. Well, Floody uh, did so well. Not only Flood in the first race and uh, Hayley Bait up. So we're we'll looking for those girls to see how they're going. Brody Moyer needs to have a great race here and she's in a nice position as she heads out in the yellow costume. So with the format being board, swim, ski, I think that Plato, that suits um, Naomi Flood quite nicely with that, that ski last league. It certainly does. She's proved this season that she's she's definitely working, working well on the ski. So to watch her come through on the last leg, she's going to have to put a very big board leg in this one to keep up and, and hopefully she can hold on to the swim. Our man is Hayden Quinn on the beach and he's going to bring us up to date with the weather conditions down there. Nick, you mentioned earlier you saw the girls shivering and I'm not sure if it was nerves or the cold weather. It is definitely cold down here. It's about 21 degrees. The wind's out of the southeast at about 20 kilometres an hour. It's been predicted to hit about 30 kilometres an hour later this afternoon. So it's not too brisk at the moment, but the girls are definitely, definitely keeping warm in between races. What were they doing, Hayden? Because as you said, with that wind chill factor, it's probably only about 17 or 18 degrees. What were the girls doing to keep their temperature up? They had their jackets on, they had legs on, they were getting rubbed by their handlers. It was all about keeping warm, keeping moving in between races so they were ready to fire into that second round. I tell you what, when you walk around Portsea, you walk beside Trevor Hendy, he's the king of Portsea, he's out on the surf. How are you, big boy? I'm absolutely waterlogged, guys. I just punched through about three or four waves in a row, all about almost four to five foot, a couple of big ones. Couldn't hear much going on. Look, the water temperature out here is about 18 and a half. Beautiful waves, about three to four foot on average, a couple of five footers or a metre and a half. And a little bit of wind creating some chop on the surface to chase some runs on the way back. But one thing about the swell out here today, it's breaking and rolling for a long, long time. So there's a lot of power and it stays in there for a long time. So it's a powerful four foot. Trevor, uh, you and I went out for a swim this morning, caught a couple of waves uh, on the sets. Can you tell us um, sort of what sort of power we're talking with the waves? And if you beat Leachy out there. <laughs> well, I, we, had, we had a little bit of a test to see which is the fastest way out. And uh, inside our info is that the fastest way out is to the left when the sets are coming through. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to be chosen to go that way. So I did beat Leachy, but it was a bit unfair. But, um, but yeah, actually, Leachy, that, that power we felt there this morning, I'm not sure if the tides dropped a little bit more on the back bank, but it's really, really pushing in now. So what I expect is when the girls are on the skis in particular, that the second or third bounce could still spin them sideways. So they're going to have to be really concentrating the whole way to the shore. Great work by Trevor Hendy, Ella Bache bringing us all the water and weather conditions. SPF 50 plus, which is the only way to go. And it looks like in that lead group, our winner from the first race could be struggling a little bit, Phil Clayton. You're looking for Hayley Beta. Yeah, she's got a very dominant pink and uh, yellow board there, but unfortunately we can't seem to point her out at the moment. She had a fantastic body wave in the first one. You'd think she'd be up there with that front group. Reason being is she's won the Australian board title numerous times. As we look at our Telstra tracker now, Amy Nervin, 22.4 kilometres, coming down on the start where they run into towards that little rip. They've they've clocked up a, a very fast speed. Well, this is when we get a chance to actually look for Hayley Bait up. Is that her in the background coming through now, up on her knees? There she is. So she's about fourth last at the moment. So something mm. happened out there getting through that break. 
Trev, how's she looking out there? Did you see anything? Yeah, I didn't actually see her through the break, Nick. Um, there was about four or five girls seemed to get caught on one side there. Must have had to roll under a wave or something. I think Hayley was one of those. The one that did get a great start, though, was Brodie Moyer. Um, she, she really got out strong. She's sitting in the front of that two board lengths in front now. But um, Hayley paddled really well on the last race, so look at, look at her to come through. Trevor Hendy out on the water, the six-time Australian Ironman champion. Brodie Moyer, she's had a wonderful season. She won the first two events. The young lady from Lennox Head, she's also the World Iron Woman Champion. She's the Cool and Gutter Gold Champion, but she finished seventh. And that makes it quite difficult in this double sprint format, Guy Leach. She really needs to um, do what she's doing right now, is get a lead. She can't control how Haley and uh, Naomi Flood is going to go, but she can control what she's doing, and she's doing a great job leading at the minute. Brody Moyer leads race two in the double sprint. This is Portsea. The waves are big. The girls are doing their best. This is... Held in high regard by the Iron Men and Iron Women for the surf, and it hasn't let us down today. It's expected to pick up during the day as a wave comes out the back. Clado, you've got your arms in the air, you're getting excited. <laughs> We're looking at about six people here working to go over the top of it. One on the right hand side, that's Naomi Flood, has caught it to the right hand side. She's going to work that right to the beach, I think. Brody Moyes just missed. Oh, she's pulled over. Elise Bennett on the outside. Three of them come down for the first leg on the board. Well, Brody Moore is not going to be happy about having Naomi Flood sitting next to her because what she would want is to get as far away from her as possible. Flood is in the perfect position here now with Swim next. If she can hang in there with her favourite ski leg last, looking good. One of the things I was impressed with race one in watching that was how well Naomi Flood swam. It's probably not her strongest of, of her legs in the Iron Woman, but she swam beautifully. It was only luck of the way for Hayley Baitup that she didn't win that race. So the swim's strong for Naomi. Uh, Nick, uh, Naomi Flood is very good when it gets bumpy, choppy. There's waves. Oh. There's a lot of girls come out of the water now. It's uh, crash and bash as we see Rebecca Creedy on the inside there running up. But a whole field, it looks like, other than a couple, are all making their way around for the swim leap. Yes, yes. Bait up. And Amy Nerthen is leading them, the young lady that won at Portsea a couple of years ago. Candace fouls on, working hard. as Moyer, Flood, and Elise Bennett, who's had a seventh and a sixth in the series so far. But we can see it gets pretty tough in the shore break with the handlers in there as well, Leachy. Oh, and they just, you got nowhere to go, and the water sucks oh. out. And it's also trying to protect your craft as well, because you've got the fin on the bottom of the board. You run up the beach, you can easily take that fin out of your board. Well, into the swim now, and you see the competitors again going off to that rock area, looking for the rip to take them out there, and that's Brody Moyer. Black goggles on, she's wearing the leader's costume. Nice high elbows, she's also making sure that she's got the head up to make sure that she is on course. I swam out here uh, yesterday with Alyssa Bull, and I just tried to show her that once you actually get to the bottom out here, there's a huge current running on the bottom, so you watch for these girls. If any big whitewash um, walls come in, you'll notice they'll try and get all the way down to the bottom and run it out the back. And Phil, tell us why the water runs out on those rocks. How does that work? Well, we've got all this whitewash pushing back into the beach and it needs to escape somewhere. Over there's a nice deep channel. The water rushes out fastest and if you're swimming, it's the quickest way out to the back. A couple of girls to keep an eye out for in green caps as well. Bonnie Hancock, who had a wonderful swim in the first race, and Rebecca Creedy Nicole, a former Commonwealth Games swimmer, always powerful. And she bridged that gap very, very quickly. So the gap that our leaders had that is now Rebecca Creedy sitting there with them. So her transition, the run, she really has worked that well. And she's now sitting right in there. Hayley Baitup has got the big arms going with the orange cap at the back there. We saw in that first race, Hayley Baitup come from 20 metres behind Leachy, the body surfing, and you were jumping out of your chair. What's the key to body surfing waves like this? Well, it's, it's, you can get down the wave easily. You get to the bottom of it. The problem starts when the wave breaks. The white water get, gets you get thrown around the white water. That's where all the power is. And what happened with her was she was back in the white water. You've got to keep your head down and kick to get to the front of the white water, then to get a breath and keep going. It's exactly what she did, but she took second place and made it a winner because of the body surface skills. Well, now getting an opportunity to get into the strokes, Phil, and that's one of the things. Until you kind of get through and get into a little bit of clearer water, you can't really get those big, powerful strokes going. Rebecca Creedy going beautifully. So she's now just zooming in on Naomi Flood, but she's gone past Brody Moyer. She has. You can see they're taking one stroke, then another. As they do that, one stroke's going a lot further than the other. Majority of the time, it's the left-hand arm. Now, when a chop comes, you don't want to take a stroke as the chop's hitting you. So you try and pe penetrate the arm straight through the chop, grab the water, and with the other arm, pull yourself over. So as a consequence, it looks a little bit like a lopey stroke. It looks almost like there's a lope to it, as opposed to a pull stroke, which is very, very even. That's exactly right. Not only that, the biggest thing when you're in a race is seeing where the can is. So these guys will wait until they're on the crest of a wave, 
as they just duck under another one. We're on the quest of, quest of a swell. They'll look up and they'll spot where the can is and that's where they'll target where they've got to swim to. We mentioned Rebecca Creedy. She's a wonderful swimmer. And we can see there the Telstra Tracker brought to you by VX Sport, 24.1 kilometres an hour. Not swimming, though. No, not swimming. Not swimming. <laughs> if she's swimming I think we'd enter into the men's 1500 if she was swimming We're that fast. City here go. That wasn't swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was on that second wave there where the girls came yeah. down on the board. I think that's where we, you would have maxed it up. Once you take off on a wave, you've got about a five or a six foot drop. She would have taken off at the top. Once she gets down to the bottom, the board runs out at max speed. That's where she would have popped the 24. Is that the fastest we've had over three races now? 24? I think it is now. Yeah. That's the biggest wave we've seen since yeah. the third round. Yeah. Well, Naomi Flood, I think, is, is controlling this swim very nicely. I just saw her look across, see Rebecca Creedy there. She kind of looked under her arm a little bit just to see where she was, to see where other competitors were, and then she kept going. So that is Hayley Bate up with the orange cap at the back three girls at the top of the screen. That was the race number one winner as we see that second bunch. A big, big thing that's going to play into account. We saw Hayley Bate up in the first wave, in the first race catch that wave. If this group can swim into the, into the break zone, if everyone can get a wave and it comes down to body surfing skills, if it comes to Naomi Flood, if she can hold that, she's going to have a great race. Portsy, Naomi Flood is right up the front and it is the double sprint format. So basically, if you win two races, you'll end up with two points. The lowest score wins overall. So Hayley Bate up won the first race. She's on one point. If she was to win the second, she'd take two and finish for the day. So the double sprint later on, the men will be in the triple sprint. And Naomi Flood, who was paddling at the Olymp uh, Olympics in London, she's out in front. And with the ski still to come, she's in the perfect position. She's sitting very, very nicely. And you know what? She's um, been doing so well. And we look at her at the actual course with the caddy. Uh, we're talking about a course running at around 20 to 25 minutes. And obviously we set the distances based on the surf. The swim leg has been put just past the break with a double break here at Portsea. Trev, Floody looking good. Um, what do you think? Oh, mate, it looks like she could have swam at the Olympics last year. I tell you, <laughs> she, when they came out through the rip, the whole field came within about 10 or 12 body lengths. So I don't know what avenues they chose, but the whole field came back together. Courtney Hancock stormed up onto Rebecca Creedy's feet, and Rebecca came up onto Naomi's feet. But now Naomi's actually stretching him out a little bit. She's got like a body length and a half, doing some backstroke. Rebecca Creedy and Courtney have chosen to go a little left, and Naomi's chosen to go a little bit right on the way in. So let's see how it pays off. But well, she looks Trev, here it comes. Well done. Hayden on the beach. Oh, yeah, I was actually speaking to Floody in the break before, and I said, well, what about bait up? She got you on that far side. And Floody knew she'd gone too far to the west. She's gone too far to the right of screen. And that's where that gutter and hole, that's the hole they're using to get out. She got caught in that, and she missed out on those waves. So hopefully she heads a bit further to the left this time around. Great insight from Hayden Quinn on the beach. One of the cardinal sins for a swimmer at Portsea is to stop swimming and wait for a wave. Oh, look out the back. Here we go. This is going to bring a lot of the tail oh, markers through break. here. it's going to break. It's going to break. There's a back marker on this. They'll catch this. They'll swim onto this one. This could change the whole race here. It broke over one of the swimmers' heads. Have got it. Yeah, tough. There's another one coming through as well, Clayton. They're doing a bit of backstroke looking over their shoulders. So this is the set coming through at about four to five foot. If someone can latch onto this, I'll tell you what, massive advantage. There are our front girls. Rebecca Creedy is right up there. The tide right at its highest at the moment. It's quite hard to pull onto these waves, Phil. It is. When a whitewash and a broken wave comes through, the best thing you can do is, as hard as it sounds, you need to jump out of the water. You need to put your back up, arch it. You need to then jump forward and get yourself nice and streamlined, hoping that that whitewash is going to push you down and push you into the beach. The thing that I always find a problem when Leach is explaining this to me, your heart rate's at 180, you've got no breath, and you have to keep your head down. You can't take that breath or you fall off the back. That's exactly right. We're looking now, someone just to the right there. I think that might have even been Courtney Hancock just pulled over Little that. Here one. she comes Little now. One. She's got her head down, as you can see. Floody trying to pull over the, the um, broken wave. That was Courtney Hancock there in second place. Rebecca Creedy back in third. Now, these guys, same thing. Your heart rate's through the roof. You need to hold the breath. Isn't you it? need to be as stiff as a board or else you can't make uh, that whitewash wave. Isn't it ironic that you've got a four to five foot surf mm. and the field has swum the whole way around the course and not caught a wave in? The irony of surf, surf race swimming and, uh, and iron women racing that you just not get catch a wave. And, uh, Kellyanne Perkins. Kellyanne Perkins has had a good swim, so she's up near the front as well. But the field would be very, very nervous because Naomi Flood is sitting in a very nice position here, coming in second place with her favourite ski leg to go. They started the first race leg on the ski, though, where the referee can wait for a break. Now it's a bit different. You're on your ski, you have to go, you can't wait. And this is where things go right, Portsy. Well, 